Hello and welcome to jQuery for Designers. My name is Remy Sharp and in this episode I'm going to show you how to create an infinite scrolling carousel. I just before I jump in I just wanted to uh, draw your attention to the new logo. Um, we uh, the, the new redesign was released last month before I went away and uh, I just wanted to bring the backdrop a little more in line and yes I think it does look a little bit like an elephant which I think is cute. But um, I've also added my Twitter account if you wanted to follow uh, my random musings about browsers and stuff. But without any more ado, let's get on to this uh, infinite scrolling carousel. So, if you go to the Apple Get a Mac Ads website and you keep clicking the uh, the right arrow or the left arrow, you'll see that the carousel just goes round and round and round. So it's not like the coda slider which we had before, which when you get to the end, um, either stops, you can't go any further, or it kind of goes all the way back the other way. This just goes round and round and round. Uh, the other thing to notice is even with the gap there, it still goes round. So that's that's the effect that we're trying to create here. I know that Apple recently redesigned their, uh, this, this page because they used to have three uh, kind of radio dots here that you could go back and forth between them all. Um, but we're gonna the way that we're gonna do this effect is to kind of create a go to uh, X page. This code's um, a little more on the advanced kind of end of the the code demos I've been doing. So if you, you know, bear with me, basically, here's our code. Now there's two ways you can present this um, this kind of non-JavaScript carousel. The first one is with the overflow here and I've pre I know that how wide the uh, the, car the the number of items is going to be so I've just preset the width which you can see on here. If I turn off this width it now stacks uh, vertically sorry and if I turn off the uh, the position absolute it gets rid of the overflow altogether. So this could be one way that you present it this could be a different way. But what we're going for is the two buttons on left and right, and it's scrolling smoothly back and forth. So if I just show you the uh, some of the CSS here, if you look at this div class wrapper, so the whole thing's wrapped in this this outer div, um, which gives us our prefix width, and this is the item that has the overflow set on it, and this is the item that we're going to um, that's going to kind of look like it's moving back and forth. In this this div, we've got a padding of 40px here. Sorry, a margin of 40px. We're going to use this area to put the left and right um, arrows because when JavaScript isn't there, I I don't think the the arrows make sense. They don't do anything. So anything that requires JavaScript should be really delivered with JavaScript. If I just show you in the markup, um, pretty straightforward. Just this outer div. The inner div, which can have the overflow and our UL with a list of elements, and inside the infinite carousel, I've styled up a link um, with a class of arrow, and I've got back and forward. So we're going to use JavaScript to insert these two links at the end of the uh, the infinite carousel element, and you'll see that they'll look like this. And I'm just using CSS to kind of create this this effect with a with a sprite. So nothing out of the ordinary at this point. Let's get rid of those. So when you come to look at the CSS, um, or in fact all the markup, you'll see um, I've got these preset widths. I've got the width of the um, inner carousel, which is the this width minus the margins. Um, I've played around with some borders and I've got some uh, WebKit transitions just because I was having a play. So going on to the JavaScript, um, I should show you how this effect actually works. Let me go back to the Apple website. Let's, um, let's kill this, this guy. Oh, stop. Thank you. Right. Let's have a look at this page, and then let's have a look at the page without JavaScript. So let's just load that up. Um, web developer, disable 
Oh, come on. JavaScript. Uh, okay, so they went out with the, the expander version. Right, that's not what I wanted to show you. Let's bring up Firebug. Now we know this is a UL with a bunch of elements inside of it. Let's just move that out of the way. The thing that I notice when I look at this is this UL has all of these elements cloned and then empty. And then we get to these elements, which, bear in mind we're on the first tab. At this point, we're visible. And at the end, we have the same thing. So let's scroll along. Let's see. Normal ally, and then we have these two empty blocks. So you can see they're taking up the space. And then afterwards we have cloned. Now what I found is clo this first cloned is actually this item here. And this first clone over here is the first one on the second page. So what they're doing is they're padding um, the beginning of the list with the end. And they're padding the end of the list Oh, sorry. They're padding the end of the list, which starts, which ends here, with the end. They're also creating these empty elements to pad it out. So we have to do that as well. So now we've got an idea of how that works. We need to get into our JavaScript. So I've loaded in the the, uh, the Google um, JavaScript library. Notice I put just one here. I can do 1.3.2 or I can just do one and it'll pull the latest one. So I'm going to create a plugin $fn.infinite. And we're going to bind it to this element. And assuming that we want to release it out into the wild, we're going to um, wrap it with this, this block of code. So that's kind of the standard way of wrapping a, a plugin. And then I'll pull this out and put it in a separate file and then release it to the world. So return this.h, which maintains the, uh, the chain in jQuery. And here's where the magic happens. Now, we need to collect a bunch of variables. So we need to collect um, a store a jQuery version of, uh, do we? No, we don't need that. We want a jQuery version of this because this is where the overflow happens. Um, and if you remember, we've got overflow auto and we want to change that. We'll want to change that to hidden. And then we'll actually change the overflow scroll left. And I believe it was introduced in the latest version of jQuery, uh, 1.3.2 where you can just do div dot scroll left and then pass in a value or sorry not div but dollar div scroll left we want to get um we will also need to grab this first item and we're going to use this first item in the list to work out how wide what the actual height and width of the of the elements are so we can pad with empty ones because we're throwing showing three items in this list here at a time and we've got Eight items. It means that we need to pad with a uh, put a ninth one on the end, so that we're always showing three li elements in the uh, in the space. So let's grab our variables. Var dollar wrapper equals, and at the same time as actually grabbing our wrapper, I'm going to set the CSS overflow to hidden. because we can chain. I'm going to grab the slider, which is the, um, the UL. And notice I'm putting the, um, the direct descendant selector. This means that I'm grabbing only that UL and I'm not going any further in. I want to grab the individual items that we're going to be working with, so that's slider.find.li. 
and I need the single element, remember? So I'm going to do items.filter first. From this list, I now need to know the single width, because remember we're going to create an empty one. An outer width gives me the uh, the width including the padding. We can double check the um, the documentation to see uh, if we want the the padding and the margin, but I I know I just need the padding and that's the the outer width uh, method. From the single width, I can now work out how many items. Um, it's going to be visible. So here, the, we, I know it's three, but I want my code to know it's three, and I don't want to have to hard code it because if I hard code it, it means we can't give it away as a plugin. So visible equals math dot seal. So we want it to round up wrapper dot inner width divided by single width. I'm going to dump out these variables just to kind of show you what we've got as well. We need a current page, and that'll be page one, and we need number of pages, which is math.seal, and oops, the number of items divided by the number of um, uh, items we show per page. So where we're showing three, Eight doesn't divide into three, but because we're rounding up, we get nine. So we know. Sorry. Yeah, it's uh, sorry. It's eight divided by three, which gives us two point something. Round up three. So we know we have three pages. So let's dump out some of the stuff. So single width. Um, yeah. And in the console, we have deadly squat. Oh, because I haven't got a ready function. Yeah, so if I put this in the foot of my code, it would have ran, and because it's in the head and before all this DOM, it's running before the code's ready. Right, our first error, a typo. Cool, so it says visible three, which is correct. The number of pages we want to show is three, because we're going to show three at a time, so that's page one, that's page two, and that's the beginning of page three, superb. This is a width is 105, so let's double check that. 85 plus 20. 105. Superb. Cool. So we've got the variables we need to, to get going. And notice that we haven't got the um, the left the scroll anymore. So the tasks we have here are one pad um, the pages with empty elements if required. So this is, since we have eight items, we actually need nine, so we need to put an empty one at the end. Two, create the um, carousel padding um, on the left and right. So these were the cloned items. Three, Three, we need to uh, reset the scroll position. That's, that's kind of an end item. Let's. I just know that's going to be a problem later on, but we'll 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 put this at the end and reset scroll. And I'll, I'll show you why we have to do that. Paging function. So the thing that gets us to go from page one to page two to page three, and then when it gets to page three. 
when we when we loop we need to go back to page one and that's where the actual effect creates the infinite loop um, we need to insert the insert the uh, back and forward images and finally I think bind the back and forward functions that's it okay so like I said not um, not an easy not an easy tutorial this time a little more complicated so let's get on with it let's pad these uh, these empty items so we want to say if um, dollar items dot length divided by oh, not divided by sorry modulus visible equals is not equal to naught, i.e. it doesn't split into an even number of three pages then we want to pad. So since we know we need to pad let's just make sure that that statement is correct. Cool. Let's just see if we have the number that we want to pad by here as well. Oh, right. Always good to use the old console log. Okay, so it's saying we need to pad by two. That's not correct. We actually need to pad by one. Two, three. One, two, three. One, two, yeah. So we need to pad visible minus that number. Yeah? Let's just double check that if length were... Um, 10 up works. Yes, that's correct. So if there were 10, we'll go we'll go into four pages and it, we'd need to add two new items. So let's take the slider, which is the UL, and we're going to append um li class equals empty, and I've already pre- I think I've pre-styled it. And that needs to happen. We can do for var i equals. I can do a for loop for this number. But I'm not going to. I'm going to, I'm going to reuse the repeat code I, I wrote a little while back. So if you remember, um, I think actually the last screencast we did, there was some code that I, I created called repeat. Uh, which isn't mine actually, it's someone else's, but repeat string n and we just do return new array. Yeah, just you know, I've got it written down, that's why I know how it's written. What this code does is repeat the string n number of times, not yeah, n number of times. So I'm going to append empty repeat that string n number of times which is this. Let's get rid of that 10. Okay, with me still? No errors. In fact I might just get rid of the overflow for the second so we can actually see what's going on. And Nope, that was no good to us. Let's just keep the overflow. Refresh, inspect, huzzah. We have this class empty. And you can see it's styled. Um, I think it's styled because of this li, yeah. So it's picking up the, the li styling, which says it's uh, float left, block, height, width, and padding. So we now have this final item that has the same padding. So we now have nine li elements one that has empty so job number one done okay job number two create the carousel padding left and right so what we need to do is clone one two three to the beginning of this ul and then one two three to the end 
Okay, so dollar items dot filter, and we want to have um, what we're going to do is hmm, let's think first dot append. No, sorry, after and before. Let's do before first. So, what we need is the last three items, and we're going to clone them. So, let's comment this out and just get this into the log. Um, Console.log, I'm going to create a nice big space so we can work in there. Items. I'm going to use slice, which is um, it's kind of like a, an, uh, an array function for jQuery. It just gives us a beginning and end point of um, the elements that we want. So since we're working with the first, we need to clone from the end. So we want minus three from the end. Let's just check if that works. That seems to work. I'm not 100% sure if it's right. I'm going to add this class clone so we know what we're looking at. Let's just stick this in and see what happens. Right, so I've cloned from the wrong end. Now let's do let's do the after the uh, the append to the end. This is just confusing me for a second. Basic slice t uh, takes two ways of putting variables in, and one of them is you put a negative number and it works from the end, and the other one is forward. So um, I'm just kind of scratching my head for the second. Come back to it in a moment. Items dot slice, and we want not to visible dot clone dot add class cloned and we've got an error oh I don't think it messed up I think I'm looking at it wrong Nope, I don't know what it is. We've appended this new, these new items into the uh, the LI. We need to reselect. Let me just try that. Yeah. That's put the first LI, you can see, at the end. Right, the reason we need to reselect is because it was items was um, this first version so the last item in there was um, this node whereas actually we want to put it after this node the new one that we created so let's see if this works yes cool so that's the very last uh, kind of real one with an image and if we check down here that's the last one with an image as well cool and after we've done this clone, sorry, the um, the padding, we again need to reselect. Okay, so our um, our effect is kind of no, what have we done? Slice is not found. Slider. Yep, so our effect's ready. Um, one thing I've noticed is that this is starting to wrap. That's because I put a prefixed uh, width on the UL. Now, it's not that I can't give it a width. It's, what, it's that I actually need to give it a massive width. So let's do that in a CSS. Oh, 
Do we need that, do we? Yeah. Is that right? Right. Okay. Yep, that's correct. Uh, okay, right. So this is the, 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 the reset scroll. Okay, so... Reset scroll is kind of 2.5. No, let's call that 3 because otherwise we're going to confuse matters. 4, 5, 6. Reset scroll. So if you notice, when I refresh, do a shift refresh, it's, it's not on the right items, but it's because it's sitting on this first cloned item. And I actually want the scroll left to sit on this item. So I need to move the, uh, the, sc the scroll left. So wrapper dot scroll left, and we're going to make it the single width times visible, so it appears on the first one. Right. See, so it's sitting on the first one. Right, our paging function. So function go to page. Let's give it a page. So this is where the code, this, this paging function is going to ha handle going forward and backwards. So what we need to work out is the direction, the um, the distance of pages that we're going to go because we're going to handle jumping to any page, and the um, the left scroll that we need to go. So the direction equals if page is less than current page, which is the, the variable that we maintain up here, then the direction is negative, otherwise positive. That's straightforward. The number of pages we're going to go is math.absolute, so a positive number, current page minus the page that we want to get to. And then finally, the left scroll that we're going to move back and forth is the single width multiplied by the direction, multiplied by the number of visible items, because we, we want to shift the whole page, multiplied by the number of pages. Okay, so you can have a play around with that. Now I'm going to say, if the wrapper isn't navigating, so I'm going to filter not animated so I don't want the user to keep clicking and it go crazy and I'm going to animate something so I'm going to animate the scroll left and I'm going to do it relative to this left so let's let's just bind that onto the wrapper so we can well no let's put window dot Go to page equals go to page. So doing this means I'm I'm making a global version of the or global access to the function. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna try it out basically. Cool. Hmm. Go to page one doesn't work. So we can go to page two. So we can go to page one. No. Ah, it's because I. Well, let's double check. Let's say five hundred seconds. We should make that an option later on. Current page equals page. So we need to update what page we're on so that it knows to go to create this kind of relative number of pages to move to. Because it still thinks it's on page one. So. Go to page two, go to page one. Cool. Right, this is where the real trick happens in this function. The, re uh, the reason why that didn't work is we had to set current page to the, the page that we went to because of left is relative to how far we're going to. 
so this is where, like I said, the magic happens. What we need to do inside of this block of code is say if the page is equal to last page, then reset position. So let me show you. When we go to page three, this is the last page, but if we go to page four, do you see how it's the beginning again? But it's not really the beginning. We know that we're we're in this cloned section now. So as soon as it completes that animation for page four, what we do is we set the scroll left back to that first item, back to this item here, once it's completed. So silently we shift the whole thing back to the beginning. So if page is greater than pages, which we stored up here, and we know that pages is three and just there it's four, we do um, what do we do? We want to go back to this this position. So let's give that a quick try. Go to page four. You see? So we go to page three. Okay. And I go to page four. So at the moment in the HTML we're here. Where are we? No, we're not. Sorry, let me reset. We go to page four. Sorry, page four is the cloned one. We go to page three. So page three, we're currently here in the DOM. We go to page four. It looks like we've looped. And if you look at the active one, it has actually jumped the scroll left back round. Now, if I get rid of the CSS overflow hidden, you should be able to see that happen. Yeah. Cool. So you you understand how that's working now. And equally, the same thing goes back the other way. Else, if page is equal to zero, we need to actually scroll it to the end. Um, and we also need to put the current page back down to to one. So we do page equals one, and um, wrapper scroll left is equal to the one at the end so this is single width oops, multiplied by visible multiplied by the number of pages oh, let's put that back so we can see it so go to page 4 go to page 2 Mm. Go to page three. Which way do we want to go? That's not working, is it? Let's stick the links in there so I can actually see what's going on. Right, um, insert the backwards and forwards link. This is a, an easy piece of code, isn't it? We do wrapper dot append, no, not append, sorry, we want it after the wrapper, don't we, yep, after and ahref equals nothing, do we even need the href, let's leave it there for the time being, class equals uh, arrow back, let's do a little backwards arrow, ahref equals, whoops, Hash class equals arrow and forward. Great that douche. And let's bind those. So wrapper dot. Well, oh, no, screw it. Let's just do um, a oops a dot back. This click.
forward. And we're going to do go to page minus one. Go to page one. Right, so there's our links. And that doesn't work. Oh, no, of course not. We're going to page minus one. What we want is the current page minus one. So go back one page. And we want to go current page plus one. Oh, got a bug there. That's okay. We'll fix that. We should um we should hide the uh, the what is it the outline here? Let's have a look why that's jumping. So I think it's actually hitting the wrong wrong page. So if it's equal to zero, which way is it jumping? Right. So forward, forward. So it's jumping, let's debug some of this out. I don't think we need the left, the left, yeah, the left works. Okay, so direction and page is working. It's got to be in here that's messing up. Page four, five. Yeah, we need to set the page equal to where are we going? Page one. Isn't that the wrong way around? I think that's the right way around, isn't it? Cool. You can see going back the other way, the uh, the overflow jumps. So let's um, let's just find those forward and back the arrow buttons. Outline none, and get rid of the overflow. And there you have your infinite carousel. And also, if you wanted to jump to a specific page, you could, let's get rid of that global function. We can do this dot bind go to, whoops, go to function. And we could do go to page, page. So I can do, wow, what was the house class name? There you go. Bit long. Go to, sorry. Trigger, go to, and then three. Cool. Go to two. So there I could actually add page, page buttons if I wanted to. But that's the effect. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. All the code um, is available for you to kind of have a crack at. I need to. Um, I do have to double check this in uh, IE, and I'm, if there's any kind of adjustments, I will put them up on the uh, the blog post that accompanies this video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.